Welcome everybody to the uh, SIG Multi-Cluster Intro and Deep Dive. Uh, I'm Stephen Kitt, I work at Red Hat and I'm one of the co-chairs of the SIG, uh, along with Jeremy Omsid thompson who unfortunately can't be here today, and with me... Hi, uh, my name is Laura Lorenz, I work at Google on GKE. Hi, I'm Ryan Zen, uh, working at AKS in Azure. And so today, if you're new to SIG Multi-Cluster and Multi-Cluster in general, uh, hopefully we'll Explain, be able to explain to you what, it's all, what this is all about, what multi-cluster is about, and what the SIG is about. If you know a little more about what the SIG does, uh, we'll tell you about what we've been up to recently, what we're interested in right now, and what we're looking to address in the future. And if you're really interested in getting involved, we'll also explain how to do that and leave time at the end for questions and answers. Um, you don't need to take photos of the slides. Uh, they've, I've uploaded them to SCED, so you'll have a um, QR code at the end to, to download them. So what is this SIG about? As you might imagine, given the name, it's about multiple clusters. Um, Kubernetes has a fairly core uh, assumption that it's about single clusters, but it turns out that that's not really enough in many scenarios. Uh, and so it's important to try to understand how end users can work with multiple clusters uh, to meet their various use cases. Um, we don't try to address everything, but multi-cluster is everywhere um, more and more, and it's used for a variety of different scenarios. Uh, for example, fault tolerance, this is where you have, well, workloads on one cluster, and if that cluster goes away, what happens? Well, if you have another one, uh, life can go on. Data locality as well, you might want to have um, clusters in some geos to use, for example, cheaper compute, but your data might need to stay in other geos for legal reasons. Um, policy reasons, capacity reasons as well, you might be able to expand more easily in certain geos. Uh, performance, if you want to keep um, processing close to your uh, data in different areas, for example. And uh, well, like I said, Kubernetes was built with the the idea that the cluster is the universe, to such an extent that for a long time there wasn't even an object inside Kubernetes that described the cluster. There was no notion of a cluster because that was all there was. Um, and when you try to think about multiple Kubernetes clusters, there's quite a long way to go before we cover everything. So we've made some progress, but there's still quite a lot to do. And so we need your input. Uh, as end users, we are really interested in hearing what you've been trying to do so far, uh, what you've managed to do, what you haven't managed to do, uh, and even if you haven't done anything yet, what your use cases might be. And so please tell us what you're working on. Our approach as a SIG, um, so Ryan will uh, mention a couple of instances in a little while, but we've, had, we've been burned in the past by trying to do too much. Um, and so now we are fairly careful about really focusing on end-user APIs. It's not about explaining to implementers how they can implement multi-cluster solutions. It's about providing uh, representations that are useful for end-users to be able to deploy multi-cluster solutions, build multi-cluster applications. Um, we also want to f keep our uh, work focused and avoid trying to address optional problems. Um, we also want to maintain consistency with existing APIs in the Kubernetes world, uh, historical APIs, but also APIs that are coming up in other SIGs, uh, for example, the Gateway API, uh, Cluster API, and so on. And we really want to build small blocks that are comprehensible, uh, but that allow you to, by putting them together, build bigger things. Um, and so one of the, the core uh, concepts in multi-cluster that's important to understand is the idea of a, a cluster set. Um, and this really represents a, a pattern of use that we've seen from the field. It's a group of clusters that are governed by a single authority. Um, and you know, obviously in multi-cluster scenarios, there are, there are situations where you might want to do other things, but this is what the SIG focuses on. Uh, clusters that are governed by a single authority and that have a high degree of trust within the set. So it's not about connecting services really point to point from one cluster to another, it's about building something bigger with multiple clusters. 
Um, and so, and uh, as a consequence of that, one of the important concepts to understand is how namespaces expand across uh, multiple clusters. Namespaces being a fairly important concept within a single cluster, and that expands to multiple clusters. And the idea there, and all the work we do in Sigmata cluster, is that uh, we preserve what we call namespace sameness, which means that if a namespace exists in multiple clusters, it's equivalent in all the clusters, and it offers the same services, um, or gives access at least to the, the same services, and has consistent behavior across uh, all the clusters. Now, that doesn't mean that namespaces have to exist in, across all the clusters. It doesn't mean that all the clusters have to provide the same services. But it means that if you see something with a given name namespace, you can expect it to work in the same way uh, across all the clusters. And uh, with that, I'll hand it over to Laura to talk about current projects. Thank you. I will take control of the slides. Um, OK, so uh, Ryan and I are going to talk about a couple of the current projects in the SIG, some of which uh, some of you may have followed in the past, some of which are quite new. Um, I'm going to start out by talking about the About API and the Multi-Cluster Services API. Um, the About API is a project of the SIG that's focused on uh, making it possible for clusters to represent properties about themselves, cluster local, um, using a CRD that's designed for the purpose. Um, so this is kind of harkening back to what Stephen said before. For example, um, there was a time uh, where clusters didn't even know like their own name because they didn't really need to. They were the end of the universe as far as they were concerned. There was no reason to know that, like, I am I, so I exist type of thing. Um, but uh, once we started working on more multi-cluster um, specifications, we did need to have sort of a first class object that was able to define those types of properties in a cluster local way. So that's what the About API is addressing. Um, the most clear um, properties that are important to us um, in the projects we're working on right now in SIG multi-cluster is the cluster's name and the cluster set it's a member of, so like who, what other clusters it's like BFFs with. Um, but this About API was designed to be flexible enough that you can add any other properties that you want, that you want to represent cluster local there. Um, if you want to find out some more about it, this is the KEP link, um, and there's also um, the About API specification itself at sigskates.io slash about API. Um, again, as mentioned, there's some stuff that we've defined, the cluster set and cluster name, but it does provide opportunity for you to define any other type of record that you want to put in this About API. Maybe stuff that you were shoving in there as labels or like annotations, and you would like to access it with a CRD instead. That is uh, what About API is trying to address. Um, the other one that I want to talk about for a little bit here is the Multi-Cluster Services API. This was one of the first um, kind of uh, big flagship projects uh, to address one of the many um, issues that exist in uh, dealing with multi-cluster application deployments. Um, this is about services across clusters. So this diagram is kind of trying to show that, say, um, you are a workload in like the red namespace or whatever, and you want to um, publish your service, and this green um, workload would like to um, contact the red service, but it would be cool if, since we're multi-cluster, we could go get the one in cluster A or the one in cluster B. We could have the endpoint that's in the top one or the bottom one or the, the cluster local one to that origin request, um, all being able to um, expose itself as a service. Um, so uh, the way the multi-cluster services API does is take the existing service API, which we all know and love, and um, give it a way to express um, this is a service that exists in multiple clusters in this cluster set. These are all the endpoints that are routable in this way um, to wherever you are um, in your cluster, and you can round rob into any of them that you want. Um, uh, and uh, the design of it is really focused on um, the multi-cluster services API being totally consumable from uh, the in-cluster representation of all of that data. Um, if you want to follow more about that, uh, here's the KEP link, and it's also at sigs.cades.io slash MCS API. Um, both of these, um, or I think MCS API being a very strong example of this, is um, addressing the point that Stephen brought up earlier, where um, the SIG focuses on the API, what the contract is um, 
for the implementation, and then the implementers implement against that API. Um, so this is implemented by a number of different um, implementers listed here. Maybe your thing if you want to do it too. Um, there is some work in progress going on here actively. Um, there is a V1 Alpha 2 um, in progress um, about a specific um, factor in the service import um, and how it, how it broadcasts the inherited service properties that uh, requires a, uh, Alpha 2. Um, but there's also some various other backwards compatible improvements that have been discussed um, in the SIG that uh, have some open changes on the CAP. Um, another hot topic is the integration between MCS and the Gateway APIs um, and how we can, um, how you can use um, already a service import as a backend ref to the Gateway API and also how that's going to evolve in the future, including as, how, as Gateway API evolves in tandem. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to shout out a bunch of people um, who have been working on this, especially Mark, Mark, Mike, wow, Mike, Arthur, John, Thomas, Jack. Thank you, all of you, uh, for uh, doing a lot of work in the MCS API in the past year. Um, right, I put this slide here, so I'll describe it now, even though I talked about it a little bit before, but um, just wanted to mention the, the, uh, the idea of MCS plus gateway is the idea that um, in the same way that you have a um, gateway route that might route to a specific type of service, you could do that across to a service that is across multiple clusters. So you could have like a multi-cluster um, ingress point described by your gateway API. So if this interests you, um, then please do follow up um, on the MCS and gateway connections. Now I will hand it over to Ryan. Thanks, Laura. Um, so next, I'm going to talk about the orchestration part. Um, so now we, we now understand that uh, uh, one cluster is not a whole universe. So we are in the multiverse uh, part of the world now. Um, just wonder uh, how many of you uh, actually have an orchestration need in your um, pet project or in your real work that you want to know? Where do I put this? Um, where do I put my application, right, if you have more than one clusters? Any of you have those uh, problems? Oh, cool, you know, you're at the right place. Um, yeah, so this is a problem that uh, we actually um, realized from, from day one as soon as uh, we wake up and realize it's multiverse, not a, a single universe. That is a problem from day one. And uh, from this, as far as I know, uh, this SIG has taken multiple steps at this. Um, the first uh, endeavor I heard was a cluster registry. It's kind of prehistoric that before my date, I. Um, according to uh, Stefan and Laura, there are some early attempts, but there was not a clear use case. Probably it's just because it's too early when the universe is not really formed. The multiverse is probably not really in everybody's mind. Um, but then um, soon we have a more uh, really uh, community-driven um, project. It's called KubiFed. I probably it's one of the more famous projects in the, uh, incubated by the SIG. Um, and Kubi could be fed V1 is very ambitious. Basically, it kind of want to replicate every API of a um, Kubernetes API. So, so you have deployment, then you also have this multi-cluster deployment, although it, it didn't really call multi-cluster deployment. Um, but then um, I think one point, Kubernetes 1.9 or some-ish, um, the CRD comes up, and then, every, then clearly this wouldn't work. And there are so many different uh, reasons that uh, could, we, could we fed V1 uh, didn't work out. Um, CRD definitely is one of them, the reason. And then uh, the community was um, not discouraged, and we regrouped and get to could we fed V2. And uh, V2, we had a brilliant idea of uh, templating of the CRDs, automatically generate uh, uh, different, uh, different uh, multi-cluster objects for automatically for every corresponding single uh, cluster objects. Um, unfortunately, or is that uh, um, I think there's still some usage out there in the in the community, but this uh, design proved to be a little bit too complicated. If you start to see hundreds of different uh, CRDs in your cluster, you might start to uh, hesitate a little bit before you're adopting that. Uh, so we um, archived it sometime either 
uh, late last year, sometime last year, right? So as uh, Stefan mentioned, that uh, uh, we learned our lessons from the sick. That uh, at least in the near future, we are going to um, focus on um, APIs, um, uh, focus on guidance instead of like really providing some implement implementations. But on the same time, again, we see all the hands there. This this request, this uh, orchestration um, requirement is still there in the in the multiverse part. So what we what happened happened was, um, so we probably, we probably have heard of a bunch of um, um, open, open source multi-cluster projects, you know, Kamada, OCM, ClusterNet, um, Kubi, Dwarf, Kubi at my, whatever, K something. And we, the, the maintainers from these uh, projects come together uh, sometimes last year. And we all realized this problem that we kind of have, uh, the community is kind of fragmented. So we would like to see if we can unify our interface a little bit. So that's how we get into this concept of uh, cluster infantry. So the cluster infantry is an idea that uh, uh, basically that just describes a whole bunch of clusters. But uh, with this discussion, we um, the first concrete API is called a cluster profile API. Uh, and uh, uh, that API, we will actually have another talk tomorrow uh, at, the, at the, actually the same time and the two levels down. So if you want to really know the nitty gritty details and see some live demos, uh, please show up there. And for this talk, I'll just kind of give you a high level idea. Um, the, I, the, the whole idea is uh, we would like to unify some of the common properties that every cluster manager needs and uh, that come up, the first API is called Cluster Profile. And uh, this is still in pretty early stage. Uh, Stefan will uh, mention that what we, we still have a long way to go. Uh, so there are definitely opportunities to help steer this towards a really community-driven, uh, uh, standardized uh, API. So come to work us. Stefan, again, will mention that how you can help uh, in the next few slides. And here is kind of like like very high level idea of what is a cluster profile API. I think uh, every time I mention cluster profile API, the first question or first few question comes is, uh, what's the difference between cluster profile API versus the cluster API? Um, the answer is the cluster API is kind of the API you dictate how the cluster uh, look like or the parameters or the configs you need for that cluster. But this cluster profile API is on the reverse side. It's a pretty much a read-only API that reflects what this cluster is. So it's kind of think of it as a, like a shadow of that uh, cluster. As Laura mentioned before that, because of this single universe thing, many clusters don't even know what their name is. There's not even a name. So that's also one of the things that uh, the, this cluster uh, profile API need to address. Like beginning, we spend about three months to decide what is the name and uh, what can be in the name, thing, whatever it can be duplicated between cluster manager, all these nitty gritty details. It's fun. If you are interested in those, come join us in the community meetings. Um, and for this, you can see the, the basic Basically, we have a cluster manager that is, think of that as any of your favorite uh, open source project or whatever your in-house script works that you manage multiple clusters. And then for those clusters, you, the, the blue ones are really, um, actually the, the ye yellow ones are actually the real clusters, right? Those are clusters that as physical clusters, whether it's on-prem or it's in some cloud providers. But then we need a control plan. Basically, we have a control plan in this, uh, uh, in this rectangular that we need to have one place to kind of have this, that's why I call it as cluster infantry. You want to need see your, how many clusters you have, like single panel, um, single glass panel thing that you see w what all the clusters you have. So that's where this uh, cluster profile sits. That gives you an idea of, you don't have to go to kubectl, change your context, go to into clusters. You kind of have an idea in, a, in your control plane, say, oh, I have five clusters, what they do, what, what things they have. So that's kind of the basic idea of uh, what this cluster profile um, uh, is. And uh, another good thing about this uh, cluster profile API is it's kind of tied up uh, all kinds of different uh, loose end of this uh, AP, the APIs in this uh, in this SIG we uh, we um, uh, sponsored. For example, uh, it works well with the work API. We actually haven't really talked about that yet. So work API is another API in the SIG that we uh, sponsor that is allow the um, the individual clusters to actually 
pool works from the control plane. So in most of the community uh, um, open source uh, multi-cluster projects, Argo CD, multi-Q, I don't know how many of you were in the, in the announcement, um, the keynotes this morning, uh, is still. Everybody basically, when they, do, when they get to multi-cluster, they basically get, have a secret sitting on their controller and then just pretend that they're actually inside that cluster. But any of you have a security guy, they are going to yell at you if you present this architecture to them. Um, so the work API is the one that solved this problem that instead of you have all your secrets sitting in one place get compromised and your whole world is gone, or we have this reverse site that it allows the leave clusters or workload clusters, whatever you call it, to actually pull the work from the hub cluster, from the control plane. So the control plane kind of have a way to, uh, to dictate what runs on the leave clusters but don't actually have access to those clusters. So it's a reverse way. That's something that actually is used in uh, Kamada, Cl ClusterNet, Kubi Fleet, all those. Uh, there's a one variant of that API that is, exists in all of those, uh, all of those uh, um, open source projects. So that's something that actually works well with cluster profile because we can allow user to uh, do the pool model with the cluster profile that saves that uh, headache from the uh, security guys. And another thing, as Laura mentioned, that there's this about API, right? The about API tells the cluster itself who you are, what you have. But uh, the cluster profile API is, is reversed. It's sitting in the control plane. Uh, it needs to tell, uh, the, there's a central controller to know that your cluster inventory, what they have. So these two actually work very well, that you, we can actually, and the next step is to define what are the other properties. There are so many different good properties, and for now, I, I think everybody wanna know how, what kind of GPUs you have in that cluster, right? Something like that. You, you need that information into the about API and then get reflected back to the cluster profile so you can have a single panel, oh, this cluster has this skill, I can get my workload, next workload to there, something like that. So, so this uh, API actually ties up those uh, uh, the existing APIs pretty well. However, um, none of them are, are well defined yet. So we have a good idea, but we still need more input. And uh, with that, uh, Stefan can tell you how to get more involved and help us. Yep, so what's next in the SIG? Um, so Ryan mentioned uh, about API and work API. Um, so there's work with, uh, along those lines with other SIG projects. Um, what we're also really interested in doing beyond APIs is well, canonical patterns. How, what's the best way to use the different tools that we have um, and what end users do with them, what works well for them, what doesn't work. Uh, we'd like to be able to document that. Um, we also need to address at some point leader election uh, across clusters just to ensure uh, coordination across the cluster set. And then it's up to you really, uh, those of you who want to get involved, um, help us to figure out what we need to look at to start operating, well, we've already started, but to continue operating as best as possible above the cluster. Uh, and so if you want to get involved, there are a number of ways of doing that. You can come and talk to us, tell us about what you're uh, currently working on. If you're an implementer or even if you're, uh, well, even, if you're an SRE or working with multiple clusters, you've probably come up with your own tools of various shapes and sizes or your own workarounds. <laughs> um, we love to hear about those. Um, the, the SIG has a bi-weekly call and the agenda for that is always open to demos. I'll tell you about that in just a, a couple of minutes. Um, also tell us about the, um, the problems that you or your customers have um, that you've, well, some of them you might have been able to solve, that interests us. Some of them you might not have been able to solve, that interests us too. Um, what are your needs, even if they're far removed from what you see the SIG as uh, thinking of just now, you know, well, Ryan just said we spent three months working out names, so we're early on in the process on some things, but uh, we need to fix the off by one thing because cloud provider bills uh, hurt. But uh, if you want to help, um, you can come along to the calls and talk to us, or come along even to the SIG meet and greet tomorrow lunchtime, um, talk to us then. If you want to actually uh, contribute uh, beyond discussing things, 
Uh, there's lots of things you can do in the SIG. Uh, we're working on test suites, conformance suites. So there's a, one that's fairly far advanced on the MCS API. But as Ryan said and uh, Laura as well, you, we have a number of different APIs. And they all really need conformance um, suites, especially since we define the APIs, but we don't define the implement implementations. It's important for end users to be able to take an implementation and or even implementers to be able to see if their implementation meets all the uh, hidden assumptions in the specs. Um, we also have a website, and that could use more information. Because we're very familiar with all this stuff, we're not the best people necessarily to write documentation that explains um, how to understand it all. Um, so we'd be interested in working with people to, to to address that. Um, so our homepage I just mentioned is at uh, multicluster.sigs.cates.io, and there's a screenshot of it there. Uh, that's one of the pages that has lots of information on it, but if you click around, you'll find lots of pages that don't have any information uh, in them. <laughs> we also have a Slack channel uh, where you can reach us, um, SIG Multicluster on the Kubernetes Slack. There's a mailing list, and if you sign up for that, you'll get a calendar invite for the biweekly calls, which happen on Tuesdays, and you can see the times there. And the next one is in two weeks' time. So you'll have a week to recover from KubeCon, and then you'll be very welcome to join us um, and just listen if you want or tell us about what you're, what you're working on. Um, and that's it. We have nearly 10 minutes for questions, I think. Uh, and the QR code there or the URL underneath, that will lead you to the Sked page where you'll find the slides uh, and the feedback form. And so if anybody has any questions, there are microphones at the back of the room. And we'll be happy to try and answer them. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Uh, first, thanks, guys, for all that uh, work that you've been doing. Like this multi-cluster stuff has been on my mind for a long time. and. Um, one thing question I have though now is like you know all the reasons you put up there for uh, policy and uh, locality and these kind of things. Now that we have like OPA and um, eBPF and stuff like that, where we can enforce that policy at the code level, um, I just kind of have like a really basic question of like, uh, why do we need more than one cluster? Why can't we just have one cluster that leverages like that software layer of OPA and eBPF? to manage all those kind of concerns around locality and uh, policy and, and, and uh, process isolation, which we can now do at like layer two with eBPF. I'm just kind of curious at a conceptual level, why multiple clusters and not, why not just have one cluster that can orchestrate across all those different uh, modalities? So you mean like a, a stretch cluster across? Yeah, like if I have a cluster and I have nodes, like why can't I just have a node and I'm asking sincerely. I'm not trying to be snarky. Yeah. Or anything. No, no, no. Yeah, I understand. Uh, like if I have nodes in the United States, for instance, and I have nodes in Europe, why can't I just have a single master group that's orchestrating those nodes across all those different regions? Like why, why the multi-cluster approach rather than a single cluster that orchestrates all those node yeah, capabilities? The laws across? of physics really, uh, in many cases, I mean, the, you'll hit latency issues. Um, in theory, it's possible. So if it works, if that's that's fine. Uh, we don't want to stop people from building huge clusters, but we want to help people who want to build small, lots of smaller clusters or lots of big clusters. Failure domains. Uh, yeah, there's the the yeah failure domains. That's a. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask, like, uh, have you run that through your architect HA stuff, <laughs> whether they will scream at you, um, how's business continuity stuff, yeah. You don't want a cluster change to break your entire <laughs> Yeah, so that's one reason to split up your workloads across multiple clusters. It just reduces the, the uh, impact uh, area, well, the damage area from a, a single failure. So yeah, different scenarios are possible. Um, how how does all this work overlap with the fleet products that uh, Google Cloud and Azure are working on? They are very related. Um, yeah, so um, we have um, representation from Azure and GKE specifically. Um, uh, 
trying to uh, connect the dots between those two um, downstream implementations and the things that are part of the SIG and things that the SIG can define to make those connection points easier, including with other third party things um, that um, if, uh, like for example, like Q, Multi-Q, um, Argo CD, those things all being um, uh, interested in a cluster profile type of solution, if that was like a standard that then those fleet solutions could also participate in, all of that ecosystem works together. Um, so yeah, I think those are, um, yeah, just very highly related and tied together in the representation of, of those as downstream um, implementers of multi-cluster solutions is important to us as a SIG to represent what's going on there. You so know? considering that those, um, those cloud providers are working on, on their own solution, but the idea is that with, through the SIG, I can possibly at some point uh, manage all the clusters across the different cloud providers from okay, one yeah. single place, right? Yeah, well, so you, you, you might not ever be able to manage them in a unified way but on, on, on the admin side of things. Uh, that's probably a, a pipe dream, but you should be able to build applications uh, that don't care where the clusters that they're, they're using end up. They should just be able to create uh, a work API object to get things installed across the cluster set and then uh, service export to make services available and so on. So. Yeah, I will say there's multi-cluster and there's multi-cloud. And there's overlap there, but there's also like hard differences, right? Um, and I, I, as um, Stephen mentioned at the beginning, we and the SIG have thus far operated very closely on this concept of a cluster set, which is governed by a single authority, trusted amongst each other, which isn't necessarily the same thing as multi-cloud or like cloud and on-prem or you know whatever th those types of architectures are like a little bit more nuanced than that. I don't think that excludes it from the solutions that are coming from the SIG necessarily, but I do think that that is something that um, we would love to have represented more. Um, there has been chatter before about like cluster set of cluster sets or like turtles all the way down or like all sorts of stuff. So like the appetite is there. Um, I think uh, the projects as they exist today, again, are really focused on this cluster set like core idea. But if you um, are interested in helping define or anybody is interested in helping more concretely define what's the difference between multi-cluster and multi-cloud and where is that gap and where can that gap be closed and where like can it not? Um, I think that's totally a valid conversation to have at this end. Thank you. Um, just uh, thank you for the opportunity for me to plug in this uh, shameless promote. Um, so for the Azure, we are actually supporting the cluster profile. Um, Tomorrow I'm going to show you the PI I just merged yesterday. So we have officially uh, supported the cluster profile API. And uh, um, other things like work APIs, we are waiting, waiting for the SIG multi-cluster to get the, those APIs into V1. MCS, work API, about API, all of them, we are working with the SIG so that uh, we can get to a community-driven, stable version that, so that we can all support. <laughs> yeah, yeah, At, uh, GKE, yeah. Yeah, I have a question about on the data plane side of things. So Sorry. we're, like in, in my org, we're several thousand clusters and the, you know, the tenants can range from they don't really care about data plane or what nodes they're on or any of that kind of stuff to they super care. Is there anything in the SIG for, like there's a concept of sameness of namespace and some other sameness, you know, in, in, the, in the cluster set and that sort of thing. Is there a concept for like sameness of node pools or anything like that? that would be supported, because like, that, that's one of the things that we have, is you have to manage all these different types of node pools. There's generic you know, platform managed stuff, but then there's people that bring their own preference of, I need these specific instance types, or I need you know, specific ephemeral storage, or other, you know, some people only accept certain instance families, that sort of thing. Is there anything in the SIG for that? That would and make that easier to just de define? Yeah, not really spec. currently. I guess cluster profile would start down the path towards that, possibly. Um, but yeah, we, that's not something we've really addressed. We, we, looked at, we started looking at uh, even topology for service discovery uh, with SIG network uh, a while back, and it was a bit too early then. But it's, those sorts of topics are things that we have on the vague to-do list of the SIG. But, uh, yeah, I do think we have are much more focused on like that cluster boundary as opposed to node pool 
um, as a boundary. Um, I don't think it totally precludes talking about it, but I do think there's probably some um, overlap or discussion, sig multi-cluster and or sig node to sort of kind of address like what can be expected or partitioned from like node to node side. Like within a cluster, there's certain expectations that are built in about like how fungible all the nodes are. And I think you're getting at that a little bit where your node pools are not as, as fungible right, necessarily. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so, like you'd have multiple clusters and some of them may have acceptable node pools and right. some wouldn't, right? And yeah. Especially, like we're rolling things like Carpenter out, you know, across different substrates. Yeah. And so if there was just some way in a spec to say these are like as part of a cluster profile or something, I think it could be useful to define, okay, these are these are what this profile needs to be. And it, that could include things like node pools. Yeah. Yeah, I think there is some overlap there. But yeah, as Stephen said, I wouldn't say it's been a top like discussion about node pools operating similarly as clusters as like boundary points for that type of thing. I just want to add is if you have good ideas, come to our community meetings. Sure. We are waiting for concrete ideas to add those properties into the About API so that it can be useful. Uh, my, hello? Yeah. Can you hear me? My, my question is that the global controller, will it have its own control plane or it will use one of the cluster's control plan to do its work. Both models exist. <laughs> yeah, it depends. Multiverse. Definitely multiverse. Um, yeah, so, um, I, and I mean, maybe you should take this question. Yeah, so you can see that from our API, we didn't dictate how you do it. That's exactly why we have stick with the API side. I think you, if you are th really thinking about that clearly, you have a dedicated Dedicated uh, control plane, you have more isolations, but you kind of lose the, you, you cannot reuse your cluster, but you have um, a, a cluster as both as a working cluster and the control plane, then you have this problem of uh, a noisy neighborhood, all these. So it's a trade off. We don't have, currently, we, I don't think the SIG has an opinion there, um, but uh, we welcome to, again, the community to come and uh, discuss. I do think there are a lot of patterns that various uh, vendors or even just like independent. Um, cluster operators are using. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, like institutional knowledge in SIG MC of people who know about some of those different patterns. Um, there isn't like an official published like guideline, like if yours is like this, it should be like this or this like this. But that is in the category of patterns from the field that we would like to represent in the same way cluster set kind of like has a defined idea. So um, that's definitely, uh, there's a lot of people who are thinking about that or who are representing an implementation of a control plane that can talk about how they've implemented it. And I do think connecting that dot between like what all those options are, what their trade-offs are, like what those best architectural patterns are is a responsibility of SIG multi-cluster. Okay, thanks. Uh, I do have a follow-up. If we choose one of the cluster as the controller, uh, it, it makes sense if you are in a single cluster set because they gotta know about each other. But if a company has multiple cluster sets, then who will be the controller in that case? Yeah, you're right. Um, and um, yeah, I think uh, they're that green amorphous blob of the cluster manager, like a lot of these APIs we're talking about, um, imply that it's a single cluster that isn't necessarily the architecture that it needs to take. Um, so yeah, I think like there's lots of variations of that. The most obvious is that it is a cluster, right? Because we like love Kubernetes and stuff. Um, but uh, it doesn't have to be that way. Um, and I think that's where that nuance is about like depending on your use case or like different vendors are uh, approaching that from a different perspective of like what that hub or what that brain or what the controller really is. And even in some of our uh, caps, like we're like the you know, the brain could be someone writing cube cuddle or like, you know, taking notes in your diary or whatever, right? Like we're, those are all valid possibilities, some more productionized than others. Um, so yeah.